Revelation that Jesus has risen from the dead, that shifts you into a whole new, not just a whole new way of thinking, but you get a revelation of a new creation. There's a new creation on the earth right now. That the creation of God is back in the earth. It's a new creation. You're not under the bondages of the enemy, but you're in the liberty of God. Amen? And everything that God has, you can have. But God says, but you have to believe it. <laughs> you have to believe How many believe it? And so any place where you want to see a change in your life where you think you're what, this doesn't look like God to me. So if you are if you got a place in your life, you say, that doesn't look like God to me. When we got saved, uh, we, we were really poor. I was happy in the spirit, but we were poor in the natural. You know? <laughs> and so as I look at that, I go, this doesn't look like God to me, that we're this poor. And God says, well, if you start believing me and you receive my revelation that you're not poor as you begin to believe that as you begin to speak that way you won't be poor you will be rich because I'm rich amen amen, amen. then if you're sick and you say well you know I don't think which I only started walking into this 15 or 20 years ago even though I've been saved for a long long time longer than that 15 or 20 years ago I'd be sick all winter and I'd say this doesn't look like God to me and so then I begin to say, by your stripes I'm healed. And well, I would take the word of God and I'd say the word of God over myself. And the revelation of that came and I understood I did not have to be sick. But if I wanted, if I want to go skydiving when I'm 75 or I want to go ziplining when I'm 80, I can do that. Amen? Amen? For most of us, it's not the flesh that keeps us from doing that. It's the spirit. <laughs> I mean, we, we do, it's the fear, you know. Amen? I don't know. Yeah, I've never skydived, but I, I don't know if I could take that last step out, you know? <laughs> Do I? <laughs> yeah, it's just like flying. It is flying. It's the landing part that I'm concerned with, you know? I don't have a part with the flying. Okay, so let's look at 2 Corinthians. So we all want revelation, amen? amen. Say, God, give me revelation. God, give me revelation. I mean, if we could see the way God sees, we would never have fear, Amen. And we would never be depressed. But, but, our, but our eyes would be eyes of optimistic anticipation. Praise the Lord. So then uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, are you a believer? If you are a believer, you are in Christ and Christ is in you. Now that's the truth. And if you don't believe that, it's not that it's not true. You just don't reap all the benefits of that. Amen. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Say, I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation. Yeah, it just means you're a brand new person. Praise God. Old things have passed away. That means the things that you, the things in the old nature that, that were in your life or the things that might be operating in your life that are still of the old nature, that are not faith in Christ, they've really passed away. I mean, you, there's people who, who are still saved and been saved for a long time and they're in the new creation, but they're still held back. They've got a tether on them uh, of something that happened to them, and they can't get over it. It's not God's fault. God just wants them to know that they are free. When? Now. Amen? They're not going to be free. You're free now. Amen? He said, when will I be free? You'll be free when you get the revelation. Jesus has risen from the dead, and you have no chains. Every curse that was against you has been broken. Praise the Lord. The day Jesus rose from the dead, it was broken. And the day you believed in him, everything was broken off of you. The works are finished, but you can walk into that. Amen? Even, even if the deception has you where you feel like it's all over you, it's not all over you, and all you need is the revelation of the victory of God. Amen? Say, it's for me. It's for me. <laughs> I mean, hallelujah, it is for you. Old things have passed away. 
Praise the Lord, all things have become new. When have all things become new? Now. Amen. When is faith? Now. Faith is always now because God is always now. God is the great I am. And God is from everlasting to everlasting. But the only time you can do business with him is God in time. No, God is not in time. God is from everlasting to everlasting. And so God always is. Amen? But the only time that we're in time, but right now is when God is. And so you say, you know, praise the Lord. Right now, I'm blessed. Right now, I'm free. Right now, I am healed. And we will never be out of right now forever. We're always going to be right now forever. Amen? And the thing is, in God's kingdom, there are no curses operating. And I tell you, where most people get in trouble is they go to the past, they can't get over something that they did, something that happened to them in the past, or they're terrified of the future. But we don't have to have either on us, amen? Because right now, the, God's grace is sufficient right now, amen? Say, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. right now. You, and we sang about it this morning. You will never be out of the love of God ever. Never. You can't even get out of the love of God. God says, I've loved you and I've transported you into new creation. You cannot die. You cannot die. There's a guy that, that I've known for years, and he, he ceased to function yesterday. He had Parkinson's. But I'll tell you this, he did not die. To be absent from the body is to be present with him. And I can tell you this, the things that Parkinson did to his his body no longer is he constrained by that praise the lord amen, amen. and you say why well, you know is that a better life it's a better life and what god wants you to do he wants you to bring we, how many we don't really know how long we're going to be on the earth amen but the thing is we're here now and so if we're going to be here another 20 30 40 years god wants you to bring his new creation revelation down into your life now he doesn't expect you to live an inferior life all the days of your life and say yeah but there's a better day coming oh in the sweet by and by there's a better day coming God said no thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven now amen <laughs> who wants to wait 30 I mean if you're 18 or 19 years old who wants to wait like 70 or 60 or 70 years to start living for God God doesn't want you to wait God says now I want you to live. Now I want you to be blessed. Now I want you to rejoice. I'm here now. Quit waiting for anything and say, praise the Lord, I'm blessed. God is for me. I've come out of the old creation when I was under the curse of the enemy. I'm in the new creation where I am blessed by God now, constantly, eternally blessed by God now. Praise the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord do what? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Don't wait to rejoice. Don't wait for something to happen to begin to rejoice. I'm going to rejoice now. I'm blessed now. Praise the Lord. Thank you for what you've put on my table today. I may not be wealthy in the natural now, Lord, but I am blessed. I'm wealthy. Praise the Lord. I'm going to tell you when you start saying what God says, it will manifest. It's the word of God. It has to manifest. Amen? Amen. Say praise the Lord. He didn't die for you to live an inferior life. He died for you to live an overcoming life in the earth realm. Amen? Amen? You are a child of God, and he says, you are mine. I bless you. I want you to show it. I want you to live it. I don't even want you to fake it. If you have to fake it just to get started, go ahead and fake it. Put an old fake smile on your face. But sooner or later, it's going to get down on your heart, and it's not going to be fake anymore. You're going to say, praise the Lord. I'm blessed. This is a day the Lord's made. Hallelujah. I'm a son of God through faith in Christ Jesus. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Praise the Lord. When now? Amen. We are children of God. We operate by faith. We are people of faith. We call things that are not as though they already were. I am blessed. My house is in order. My house is a place of joy. Amen? Amen? I mean, we're doing remodeling at the house, and you know, sometimes you just got to speak the promises over yourself. And Kathy, you know, I don't care. You know, I don't care. Does, do most men care what your house looks like? I mean, I don't care what the house looks like. You know, I just don't care. So anyway, I said, we'll just get what you want. Okay, we'll do this. Well, we get to the end of the all the choose. 
well, I want you to pick out one thing. I said, no, I don't, I, just do it. Just do it. Just get it done. You know, I, I'm just a guy. Let's just do it. And let's move forward, you know. Praise the Lord. <laughs> no, I want you to pick out one thing. I said, well, you know, I don't want to. No, one thing. Pick out, pick out the color of the shutter. You know, no, go ahead. Put, no, no, I want you to have input into this. I said, no, I don't care. No, I want you to have. I said, okay, well, okay. Well, how about blue? <laughs> no. and, and so she just has this face, you know, like she's got, it's like she's got really bad constipation, you know. And, 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 uh, and, so, I, and so I didn't say anything. And she said, what do you think about those shirts? I said, I, I told you blue. And so then the, the, the guy that's doing the work, he comes and, and she, he brought some samples. And he's like, driftwood blue. She said, driftwood blue. Driftwood blue, that's 80s. That's, that's 80s. And I said, well, you know, if it had a different name, would it be okay? Does that throw you back in the 80s, you know? I don't know. So anyway, I said, Kathy, just go back to square one. Just get whatever color shutters you want. Okay, thank you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but anyway, your house can be in order. You just need to know what's important. It's not important to me. Now, some things are important to me. Joy, love, peace. That's important. Shutters don't matter to me, you know. I'm not going to lose any, you know. We, so we go around driving one day, and everybody had green shutters. And so, er, so then we come to this one house, and everybody, and we go, we don't like, it's got green shutters. We just think we don't like green shutters. But we don't like blue shutters either. We come to that understanding. <laughs> so we come to this one house, and there's these bright green lime shutters. And I said, how do you like those? I love those. I'm telling you. The thing is, don't ever try to figure out the mind of a woman. Just say, God bless you. Amen? Okay, so in Romans 6, 8. Is that where I'm at? Romans 6, 8 through 11. Do we have that, brother? Okay. Now, the day you gave your life to Jesus, you died to the world system where you were cursed. We're not cursed, we're blessed. It doesn't matter what country you live in. It doesn't matter if you're a male or a female. It doesn't matter anything. If you're in Christ, now you're not cursed, you're blessed. Because Jesus took your curses at the cross. And when you believe in him, in God's eyes, you died to the curses through Christ. He took your curses. Death, poverty, sickness, anguish, depression, bad attitudes. If we die with Christ, we believe we shall also live with him. When? Now. Amen? Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, he does not die anymore. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for everybody. Say, that's me. <laughs> that is you. But the life he lives, he lives to God. See, there's a life. He died to the life of curses. He's living to the life of blessing in God. Now. Amen. Likewise, you also reckon yourself to be dead indeed to sin. Say, sin doesn't have dominion. I'm not, I'm not because I can't sin because Jesus took all my sin. And even if I sin next week, he paid for that too. And if, even if I sin next year, he paid for that too. doesn't make you want to sin, but it does. you need to know you're righteous. Say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm in Christ. You are in Christ. Now, that's how God sees it. And when you're dead... Indeed, to sin. You cannot sin because Jesus died how many times? One time for all. One time for all. He took everybody's sin one time for all. You can't, if you're in Christ, you can't sin. He took all your sin. Praise the Lord. And he died and it was canceled. Praise God. But I'm alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Praise the Lord. Now you're in the new creation life. Hallelujah. You don't have to worry about things. You don't have to fret about things because God is for you. God is the creator of everything, and God is for you. You've got the favor of God all over you. Amen? 24-7, praise the Lord. Amen? 
and then Romans 8.16, which means that we have all the resources of God. So no matter what God wants you to do in this life, he says, I'll supply your need. My God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory in Christ. Amen? So if you have a finance problem, you don't really have a finance problem. You've got a faith problem because you're trying to draw it from the wrong source. Amen? But if God is your source, you'll never have a finance problem because God already has your finances laid up for you to finance anything he wants you to do in this life. It doesn't matter how much it costs. He's got a, he's got a billion dollars laid up for you if that's what it costs for you to fulfill your purpose and destiny in the earth. As long, you're saying, Lord, you're my source, my only source. Amen? Amen. Poverty is defeated against you. Amen? Amen? But you've got to believe and you've got to stay in faith because the enemy is a liar. And even though he's defeated and even though he has no dominion over you, if he can lie to you and say, well, you can't get over that. You, did, you don't deserve that. You did this. You did that. Praise God, I'm a new creature in Christ and I am sinless and I am righteous in God. You say, well, I don't know if I can ever believe that. You start saying it and you start believing it and you will begin to move into it. Amen? Well, I don't need to be rich. I'll tell, you who, I'll tell you who has a problem when you talk about the wealth of God is poor people because they want to justify that they're poor. But God is okay if you want to be poor, but he said you don't have to be poor. Right. Amen? Amen? He said, and so most people, I'll tell you, if you talk about the wealth of God and the riches of God, people with, with great wealth in God, they don't get mad at you. It's the poor people that's got an attitude. They say, well, I don't like that preaching, brother. Well, you know, it's not my preaching. Amen? And if you want to be poor, go ahead and be poor. I don't care. I'm just saying you don't have to be. You can be sick too, but you don't have to be. You can be miserable too, but you don't have to be. Amen? You are in a new creation lifestyle. Praise the Lord. Say praise the Lord. <laughs> because it's by the resurrection of the Lord that all this is available to you now. Amen? And you can walk around looking like a bulldog in the summertime with your old, old sad face and, and slopping at you around. The, uh, and it's okay, but God doesn't want you to be that way. Amen? He said, my God, smile. Your face won't crack and fall off. And if it does, praise the Lord. Amen? Oh, boy. I'm going to preach to myself for a while. Okay. Okay, so then, uh, you know, God wants you to know who you are. If you don't know who you are, you can't receive it. Would you agree? If you still see yourself in an obsolete mindset, an obsolete paradigm viewpoint, you'll never be who God wants you to be, even though you're saved. It's my destiny to be miserable. Says who? The devil, that's who. That's right. Well, I'm just, I'm never going to make it. Not if you keep saying that, amen? God says, I know who you are. I knew who you were before I put you in your mother's womb. You got all this junk piled on you. I've redeemed you. I've broken your curses. I've let you out, and now you're a brand new person. I want you to know who you are, amen? Do you know you're blessed in God? Do you know you're blessed in God? Do you know that God wants you to be happy and free and joyful? Amen. And so God's saying, I want you to know who you are in me. Who was it, Sly, that Sly and the Family Stone? Thank you for letting me be myself again. <laughs> Amen. But see, God doesn't want you to be your old, your old miserable self. He said, now I want you to know who you really are. Amen. Did he do it with Abraham? He did. What was Abraham's name? Abram? But he, he said, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to do a miracle. I don't care if you're 100 years old, you're going to have children. Look up in the sky, more than the stars you can count. He said, now your name's not Abram, your name is Abraham. And then he wrestled with Jacob, and he said, what's your name? I want you to know who you are. My name's Jacob. No, your name's not Jacob. Not anymore. I want you to know who you really are in my eyes. Your name's Israel. You're a prince with God. I love you. My favor's on you. You have no limitations. You're blessed. Amen? Amen? And I pray today you get revelation of how God sees you. That you're his kid. 
that you're his, you're his best, that he loves you, and he says, I want you to walk in my blessing and favor all the days of your life. Amen? That's God's desire for you. Look at Genesis uh, 14. He says, uh, what do what I have? Did I have some more of that, brother? Okay. The Spirit himself, look, when, when, Jesus, when Jesus rose from the dead and when you got saved, the Spirit, Jesus gave his Spirit back to God and he died on the tree and he took all your curses as a man, as you. But when he rose from the dead, now he says, now if you believe in me, I'm going to send my resurrected spirit inside of you, inside of your body. You're not going to be yourself. You're going to be, you're going to be your real self. Amen? You're going to be your real self who I made you to be. And I give you the power to accomplish everything I've got for you to do on the earth. And so we got this witness in ourselves. The Spirit himself, the Spirit of Christ himself bears witness with our spirit that we're the children of God. Praise God. We're in a different family. We're in the family of God. Amen? Amen. And if we're children, then we're heirs. He's talking about everything in the earth. We're heirs of every bit of wealth, every bit of blessing. Just like the Garden of Eden, we're blessed. Except now the enemy is not, he doesn't have authority over us. We have authority over him, amen? And if children then were heirs, we're heirs of God and we're joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, we may be glorified together now. <laughs> is Jesus glorified now? He says, I want to glorify you here in the earth realm as my child. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to undeniably bless your house. That there's laughter and joy prevailing through your house all the time. Amen? Is that all we have, brother? Okay. Okay, then Galatians 14. Genesis, whatever, whatever. <laughs> okay, then Melchizedek. Now, he was a type of Christ, amen? Because it says he, he, he was the priest of Salem, the prince of peace. Melchizedek. And so uh, Abraham, they, 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 kid, they, they came in and they took over. These kings came in and took over Sodom and Gomorrah. And they took away Lot, and Abraham found out about it. So he said, well, I'm going to go get my, my nephew. They're going to kill him. They took all, they've taken all of his wealth. It's basically what Jesus did to us. So he goes in, he rescues, he rescues Lot, and he comes out, and he meets Melchizedek, who's, who's the priest of Salem, and he tithes from, from all the wealth that they're coming out with. They've just won these wars, and Abraham's coming out, and he meets Melchizedek, and he ties. He, he gives him 10% of all the spoil. And then Melchizedek, the king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. What, what did we do this morning? See, that's just a type of Jesus. Amen? It's his broken body and his blood. Praise the Lord. He's broken our curses, and he's covered our sins. Hallelujah. He was a priest of, the, of God most high. And he blessed him. And he said, blessed be Abram of God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. Amen. And blessed be God most high who has delivered your enemy. There's no enemy that can stand before you. There is no enemy. You are in God and God is in you. There's no enemy that can stand before you. There's no depression that can stand before you. There's no fear that can stand before you. There is no weapon formed against you that can... There's no addiction that can stand before you. There's nothing that can stand before you. Amen. Because God is in you, who has delivered your enemies into your hand, and he gave you a tenth of all. And now the king of Sodom said to Abram, give me the person and take the goods for yourself. See, I mean, they just conquered. He said, you know, but the king of Sodom was, I mean, we know about Sodom and Gomorrah. It was not a good place, okay? And so he said, give me the person, you take the goods for yourself. And then Abram said to the king of Sodom, I've raised up my hand to the Lord. I made a vow. I said, Jesus, you're my God, the Father of my Lord Jesus Christ. You are my God. How many have made a commitment to the Lord? How many have said, Lord, you're my God? Okay, well, you raised a hand to the Lord. 
And see, we, and the devil's having a hard time coming and cutting deals with us because we, we, we know his deal cutting is inferior. We know when he says, no, you can have this, you can say, no, I already got this. I don't need to cut a deal with you anymore. Amen? I don't need to stick a needle in my arm. I don't need to run coke up my nose anymore. You can't cut a deal with me the way you used to. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You can't tell me I can get wealth this way. I've got a different source. God is my source. Amen? I've raised up my hand to the Lord God, most high, the possessor of heaven and earth, and I will take nothing from a thread of a sandal strap that I will not take anything that's yours, lest you should say, I've made Abram rich. He says, I'm not cutting any deals with you. I don't want anybody to say, it's because he cut a deal with that guy or this guy that I've made you rich. But I'm going to tell you, he did say Abram was rich, didn't he? And you're the seed of Abraham, and you're rich. Say, I'm rich. I'm rich. I mean, a lot of people say, see, he won't, you're not rich. He was rich. He was, indeni he was undeniably rich. You're rich. You just got to get some capacity. You've got to get some revelation whereby you can walk in the wealth God wants to pour out on you. Amen? Amen. I pray your capacity to receive the wealth of God, that you can do what God wants you to do. I pray it's expanded where you can walk under the weight of the glory of God in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I mean, I don't know what your politics were, but I did, when Trump's daughter was talking the other night, I did like one thing she said. She said this. She said, uh, Dad always told me I, I, that I'm always thinking about something. You'll always be thinking about something. Think big. You're always going to be thinking about something. Think big. I'm going to tell you, God's saying that to you. You're always thinking about something. Think big. Praise the Lord. We got, we got a God who's the possessor of heaven and earth. Praise the Lord. And he's not got any problem in heaven. And he said, we're taking the earth back over too in Jesus' name. And it's not, we're not crushing people. We're liberating people. We're saying you're not under those curses anymore. Come on out in Jesus' name. Let my people go. Pharaoh, let my people go in Jesus' name. Spirits of poverty, spirits of, 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 of sickness, spirits of depression, let my people go in Jesus' name. Spirit of dreamlessness, let my people go. Let my people dream again. See, if you don't have any wealth, all your dreams don't amount to anything because you can't say, well, what's this use to dream? I can't finance it. But God says, I'll finance anything you'll dream in Jesus' name. Come awake, come awake, come and rise up from the grave.